Валерия Чадо Пят, политехника Титорино. Homogenization of networks in domains with oscillating boundaries. Please, Mrs. Пят. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I will speak in English. Uh, I will talk about a topic which has uh, several um, keywords. Homogenization, let's say mainly the three keywords, homogenization, networks and um, oscillating boundaries. Um, let's see if it goes on. Okay, the topic is dedicated to um, Vasily Vasilyevich, Professor Shiko. Um, you will recognize uh, together with him, it's me, it's uh, Grigori Yusifian and another colleague Marco Codegona from Politecnico of Torino. The picture I found in my computer was taken in, uh, in Torino in 2001. And I want to, to say that uh, I remember uh, Vasily Vasilievich as a great person for his mathematical uh, contribution to the field. And especially what I liked very much from him was uh, the ability to go beyond the obstacles uh, just pointing to uh, the, the crucial, the crucial difficulties, but trying to find uh, the simplest way to, to explain the solution. So I think I could learn a lot, maybe not in not enough yet, uh, from him. And uh, the problem we discussed uh, um, today is uh, in collaboration with Andrea Brides from the University of Rome. So uh, I try to explain uh, first some um, how what uh, we do is linked to the works um, of Zhikov. So something about the past, um, so these uh, topics, how were they treated in the past, and, and then we will focus on the present work. Uh, so once upon a time, in the sense long ago, when I was a baby, there were several um, topics that were very popular, and some of them, I think, are still popular now. So, for example, uh, I don't know if you recognize these guys, I think they were popular and maybe they are still popular now. And uh, concerning mathematics, mathematical problems that were very popular in the 70s and till now is homogenization in perforated domains. So problem related, for example, for simplicity just to heat, conduct, to heat conduction, were this ice cloud problem and the insulating inclusions problem. Uh, so here we see this uh, perforated domain and for simplicity we focus on this uh, Laplace equation, Poisson equations, where omega epsilon is the perforated domain and in the two cases the ice cloud, it means that we have the boundary conditions, so we have in, in the inclusions we have ice, uh, around the, the body we have ice and here we have the conduction of the heat, uh, so G is the let's say heat, heat, heat source and U epsilon is the temperature of the body. And uh, the other problem is the, the model problem of the insulation. So the insulators are uh, periodically distributed in the body and there is no um, uh, flow or heat flow uh, normal uh, at the, the boundary because the inclusions are perfectly insulated. Uh, so, uh, the, the, if you want, we can see this problem in, in the setting of minimum problems and generalize it to nonlinear uh, cases. Uh, so we can uh, think about minimizing some energy function. Here, this term takes into account, replaces the Laplacian, if you want, the Dirichlet integral. And here we have the source. And um, we minimize over a set of functions that depends on uh, the kind of boundary conditions that we want to consider and the periodicity of the domain is, may, may also be present in the, in the functional. So here, in the simplest case, f is a convex in the gradient and we consider a scalar problem. Uh, we will focus just on the Neumann case for the uh, insulating inclusion. So we have essentially W1P, uh, the solar space in omega epsilon. And at the time, the difficulty was just we have uh, the solutions of these problems are defined in domains which are variable with epsilon, and we want to compute the limits of these solutions and understand what happens with the minima. So minima and minimizer will converge to something. So at the time, the approach was mainly, um, 
let's say, to use an extension operator, so to extend the functions that were defined in the conductor outside in some way, and this required some um, special properties of the domain, let's say, to make it an extension domain. Uh, it was required that the domain was, in, in a way, regular, the boundary regular enough, and also we wanted to extend the solutions in order to keep um, uniform bounds on certain norms and to go to have this, um, the, the connectedness of the domain was very important. So there were two limitations, regularity and connectedness. But uh, if they are true, then uh, it was possible to extend the solution, to pass to the limit in the extended ones, and to compute the so-called homogenized problem. And uh, so the typical result was this, if your domain is just a piece of um, a periodic conductor scaled by epsilon, and the conductor is, uh, let's say, with smooth boundary and connected, then, for sure, um, the minimizer uh, extended uh, in the fixed domain converged to some function, and the minima uh, also converged to the corresponding object of a limit problem, and uh, the limit problem can be characterized by a cell formula, the so-called homogenized formula, with pre-growth conditions. So this was the typical result, and the work was try to extend, to extend to more general and more general geometries. So first, in the beginning, uh, only, uh, let's say, disconnected insulators were considered, then uh, uh, maybe uh, more general structures where the insulators are not anymore disconnected, and this allowed also to consider uh, tubular or reticulated structures. But uh, in all cases, so I, I am very embarrassed to say who did this work because there are so many people, so for sure the references are incomplete. But at least just think about uh, the 70s and 80s. And uh, so, uh, despite these results, still some cases were excluded because, for example, the regularity of the domain uh, excluded uh, some important geometries for example, these are oranges, but just to say that I consider, let's say, balls, tangent balls that are, uh, are our insulator, and in 3D it means that the complement set is uh, connected, but it is not smooth, so the approach with extension operator was not so easy to, to get, and also uh, the case of, let's say, uh, networks was not easy to treat within this approach. So, some people started believing that the domain regularity was just a technical problem, and among them, uh, Shikov, Shikov quoted these persons in a talk, uh, people coming from the field of um, probability theory and PDs with probabilistic, in the probabilistic setting. Then, um, I, I think the crucial step, the new ideas came, in my, my mind, uh, Meeting uh, his, uh, reading his papers and meeting Zhukov concerning uh, these topics, so the papers in 94 and 96, where he introduced really uh, a new, uh, several new ideas to go beyond this limitation on the domains. And I would say uh, that the notions were these three, the p-connected domain, uh, p-connected domain in the torus, and p-connected measures. And essentially, in the, the first notion, uh, provided the tools to homogenize without extension operators, and getting uh, really the, the usual results in the sense of cell formula, coerciveness for the homogenized uh, integrant, convergence for minima and minimizers. Uh, the weaker notion of connectedness on the torus gave uh, also the opportunity to consider uh, more general structures where there may be a loss of coerciveness. And this loss of coerciveness is something that happens in our problem with Andrea Braides. So I want to uh, stress this, this point, to underline this point. So in this, kind, in this kind of geometries, the limit may not be anymore in the whole solar space, in the usual solar space, but it may lose the summability of some of the derivatives in some direction, for example. And the, the last step was crucial and permitted to go beyond the sets, just in the usual sense, like closures of open sets, but to consider also, let's say, fractal domains, um, identifying the, the sets as supports of measures and considering the convergence with respect to measures. But now I want to go to, to the actual work. So, okay, ju just to recall the, the to be to be clear.
clear the notions of uh, p-connected set in, in, the, in our end, for example, the keyboard, the black squares, uh, open squares, uh, make a disconnected set, but this set in 2D is p-connected with p greater than 2, so can be homogenized. And the stripes, this union of stripes, this is not p-connected in the large, but it is p-connected on the torus, and then there is also a uh, bi-shift of applying. Okay, so what is uh, what we are going to do now? Here, the keywords are in networks and oscillating boundaries. So, what we want to do, we wanted to try to do, is to make homogenization for integral problems uh, on the domain, which is a sort of grid, but the grid is below the graph of a uh, strongly oscillating function. So, our domain is of this type, and combines these two problems: networks and oscillating boundary. Uh, there are good motivations for oscillating boundary domains. This is a field, I am new in the field of oscillating boundaries, so I don't know very much. But uh, as far as I know, uh, there are not many, many papers concerning uh, smooth boundary, and uh, instead there is a very uh, much on the um, discontinuous boundaries and, for example, thick junction structures. Um, so, what we consider, we consider a function of this form. Um, it is an integral. Uh, the integral is done on a domain which is the intersection of a cylinder. The cylinder is omega times 0, 1, which is fixed. Omega is in R2, it is a cross section. Intersected the G epsilon. And G epsilon is as in the picture before, in a sense. G epsilon is the intersection of one dimensional epsilon lattice of R3. Uh, with the subgraph of a strongly oscillating profile function G. So this is the, uh, the network. Uh, the function can be as before, let's say we will see the, the details, maybe it depends on a space variable which is oscillating. And H1 represents the one-dimensional house of measure. So the integral has to be scaled by epsilon squared, because in this domain we have 1 over epsilon cube. Uh, cube sets, if you want, and we integrate with, uh, let's say, measure order epsilon. Um, so this is the problem we want to study. Uh, so some notation, I will denote by n the network in R2, uh, which is this one, and the network in R3, which is this one. Um, and we uh, what are, what are our assumptions on the profile function? So G is a function from R2 to R, uh, which is periodic with an integer period K. Uh, this is the periodicity cell. We assume that it has, for simplicity, just uh, a range between a certain value of minimum G, which is positive here in the picture, and the maximum we normalize to 1. We admit also non-continuous functions, but we need to know the pointless values of these functions. So measurable functions is too wide, we need, for example, lower semi-continuous functions. So this picture represents the cross-section of the subgraph, and now comes the assumption, which assumption do we make on this subgraph? This is the replacement of the connected properties of Rigoff, in a sense. Uh, okay, let's, uh, this is maybe um, a piece of the graph of G. If you intersect this graph with an horizontal plane like this, x3 equal to z, then you have these curves, and then on the, on the plane x3 equal to 0, you see these two curves, and the part above, so the part where G is above the level z, is here. So you take this area and you intersect this area with uh, the lattice in a, the network, the lattice in a R2 on two dimension. This set here with these segments is our S of Z. And we make the assumptions on this set. So it is a union of segments containing the plane here that comes considering the part of the graph above a given uh, plane at height uh, x3 equal to z. Okay, these are the assumptions. We assume that we have, uh, let's say, three levels. The lower level, the middle level, and the upper level. In the lower level, we assume that we have a good connectedness properties, in the sense we, we can move along the network in any direction, as in the picture, even if there may be some hole. 
Uh, in the second, in the middle level, so if Z is between, let's say, Z1 and Z2, we assume that we lose some connectedness. In a sense, if you take the set and intersect the set with a stripe, a stripe of the type 0K, K is the period, and R in the uh, X2 direction, uh, we assume that the set is connected, so you can walk around, but it is disconnected from the next stripe if you move of uh, an integer vector in the direction of X1. And the third level, for the upper level, we assume that uh, just the periodicity cell is connected. So if you take S of Z, intersect is 0K, the square. But if you move in any direction, X1 or X2, you, you lose the connectedness. So in a sense, B preserves the connectedness in direction X2, but loses in direction X1. And C means that Z preserves the connectedness only in the cell. Okay, so for example, G may be like this. If G is this function, this profile, then if you cut with a plane at this level, you have a connected network. If you cut the plane at this intermediate level, you keep connectedness in the direction X2, like this, but you lose connectedness in direction X1. If you cut the graph at the level Z higher, at the higher level, at the level of these bars, then you lose connectedness in all directions. So here, for clarity, each picture, so again, the same G as before, and here the lower level, the grid may be the full grid, or maybe you have some holes, like these holes, but this does not prevent you to walk around, so this is the connectedness at the lower level. In the intermediate um, uh, layer, I keep the connectedness in this direction, the direction of X2, but I lose connectedness in direction X1, and then, uh, in the third level, I just have connected cells, but okay here, but I lose connectedness in the other direction. So these are the assumptions. And uh, in general, given G, uh, we may have different situations in each layers. But for simplicity, we assume now that we have just, uh, let's say, S J is constant in each of these three layers. So we have S is equal to S one in the lower one. Uh, S2 in the middle one, and S3 in the upper one. And now we take the set uh, below the graph and we intersect with the network. So here we, it is our domain. Uh, the, the important thing is that when we shrink with epsilon, um, uh, what happens is that we have more oscillations, but uh, the height of the oscillations remain the same. So the domain is not epsilon periodic, it is, uh, let's say, epsilon k periodic in direction x1, x2, but it has different behavior in the third direction. And actually, we simplify our problem removing the, the, the segments that are, that are not fully contained in the subgraph. So our set really is now this g epsilon. Okay. Okay, uh, and G-Epsilon can be seen, if you want, can be seen as the uh, uh, Epsilon G, G1 or Epsilon G2 or Epsilon G3 at, at each level, in a sense. So I tried to make a picture, but I couldn't do it completely, so... Okay. So now, we want to homogenize this functional, and the question usually are the following. We want to compute the gamma limit, so to, give, to deal with um, minimum problems. And we ask which assumptions are F, and especially which topology, which convergent do we take. So the, the choice of topology is driven by the definition of gamma convergence, uh, which I just want to recall. We want to prove that for each u and for each sequence u epsilon tending to u, then f of u is smaller than the limit of f epsilon u epsilon, and uh, for each u there exists at least a sequence u epsilon tending to u, such that f of u is greater than or equal to the limb soup of f epsilon u epsilon. The, the good feature of uh, gamma convergence is that you are free in the choice of the topology. And uh, if we assume f of the time uh, as before, so just change the period uh, in order that it is um, the same as the profile function g, so we take period k, then we, we have the same assumption. So a smooth, let's say, Caratheodori function with convexity in the gradient and with periodicity in y with growth conditions. And for simplicity, let's take that it is 0x0. 0, 0. 
So in this setting, uh, the good choice of the topology is driven by, by the fact that we want to have convergence of minima. If we want to have convergence of minima, the good thing to do is to choose a topology that gives you compact minimizing sequences. So, because this general fact that if you have gamma convergence and minimizing sequences are compact, then also the minimum values converge. So now we choose a topology and we follow Zhikov. So we copy. We copy from him in the sense that our measures are, let's say, scaled measures of these ones, which means to compute the measures of sets in this way, intersect with the grid and multiply. And uh, these measures have weak limit that can be computed if we have, uh, we have, we do not have three layers, we would have just a multiple of the Lebesgue measure. But here we have a behavior of the lattice which is different at the lower and the middle and the upper level. So we have uh, as a limit a um, the Lebesgue measure multiplied by some uh, density which depends on, uh, on the x3, on the coordinate x3, and takes into account how much of your grid is present in the, in the different levels. So this function mu can be computed explicitly. It is the sum of two terms. One term takes into account how many nodes are in a cell, uh, the proportion of how many nodes are in a periodicity cell, and the other term takes into account the measure of the segments that are there. So this is the weak limit of the measure. And now we copy Zhikov and we take as a convergence u epsilon tends to mu if and only if u epsilon u epsilon has a certain limit. And the limit is expressed as a density, u is the density of the limit measure, and times mu, mu times the back, which was computed above. So with respect to this notion, we, we consider our gamma convergence problem. And we must say that these measures uh, at the lower level, if you consider just the, the restriction at the lower level, they satisfy some peak connectedness conditions. I express this condition in a different way. Uh, this way was uh, in the previous paper by uh, Privacy and, and myself, where we consider networks but uh, non-oscillating boundaries, so with fixed boundary, nice boundary in a sense. And so these conditions are essentially two conditions. One is the coerciveness and one is the usual Poincaré vertigen inequality. Uh, here in this layer we can think that our measure is just the scaled measure of a fixed one lambda. So the conditions are expressed in this way. Okay. Um, so coerciveness. This may be is the, uh, the, new, the new one with respect to uh, the coerciveness is expressed in a discrete way. So I take, uh, I fixed any node, two nodes in Z3, and I consider, we consider the mean value with respect to the measure lambda over a cell uh, starting from the node W. And we compare the different values of these uh, averages, and we assume that the jump uh, the jump between two, two constants in the neighbor cells uh, can be estimated by uh, the norm of the gradient to the p on the union of the two cells, uh, plus something, if, if you need to have a larger set. This is what is, plays the role of the coerciveness condition and ensures that the limit is coercive. And the other, the other condition is the usual one, the Poincaré virtual inequality in a cell, we estimate u minus the mean value with an integral uh, over the gradient, for the gradient. Over the cell may be enlarged a little bit if, if needed. Okay, uh, so provide first our minimizing sequences are compact in the sense that if we take a u epsilon as sequence of functions uh, with bounded energy, uh, uniformly bounded energy, then we always, uh, we can always extract a subsequence uh, converging in this weak sense to a limit, uh, okay, up to addition of a constant in the sense because we have just assumed bounds on the gradients and then we have to translate a little bit uh, to, to, to move a little bit uh, these functions. And what are the properties of the limit u? Uh, the limit u is in LP of the whole cylinder 
And the derivatives are not, in general, the derivative with respect to x1 is just Lp in the lower part of the cylinder, the derivative with respect to L2 is Lp in the lower and the middle part, and the, upper, uh, the third derivative is also Lp in the whole cylinder. And this is due to the connectedness assumptions. So essentially, uh, the limit belongs to this sort of stratified suballoy space that uh, we denote by Xp of omega, right, psi 3. Uh, for this problem, we have uh, also asymptotic formula, uh, like this, for example. Uh, so, an alternative formula is an asymptotic one. Uh, what, is this, uh, what is this set? Let's say, consider the cell of this type, 0k is the small segment, and 0t is the big segment, so t goes to plus infinity, and so this is this block, in a sense, is this cell intersected with the network. So we minimize these integrals and we divide by the measure of this, the volume, t squared times k, uh, minimizing over functions that are affine in x2, x3 on the boundary of these guys. Okay, this is an asymptotic formula which is helpful in putting the things together in the end. And then, last step, third layer. In the third layer we have, uh, again, a gamma limit. The homogenized formula now depends only on the vertical derivative. Uh, so again, we have a cell formula, uh, but now we minimize over functional functions u that differ from a fine function in x3 only with key periodicity in x3 only, and we have only perceivedness in x in xi3. Also for this term, we have asymptotic formula, and now this is made on rods instead of thin layers. So the cell here is uh, the square 0k, 0k times 0t, the big interval, and when limit uh, is taken as t goes to plus infinity, this guy converges to uh, our homogenized formula. And here the boundary conditions are only on the, on the top, here on this square, and on the bottom this square. Okay, once we have all this, then we are able to define finally the, the energy of the density of the, of the limit energy. Uh, so our F homogenized for the full problem is a function that depends on X3 and on Xi. So it is not independent of the, of the coordinate of the space variable, uh, as we expected. And at each level you use a different formula. So at the lower level we have full radians, and the middle one we have just derivative with respect to x1, x3, and then in the third uh, level we have, when x3 is larger than xz2, we have just derivatives in the, uh, in the vertical directions. And then this is the final result, so the initial functional can be homogenized, so the f epsilon gamma converges with respect to the convergence uh, in the sense of measures, to a functional which is of this form on the whole cylinder, and uh, the homogenized formula is the one uh, we explained for the functions in xp of uh, the suballoy space xp omega. So this is the main result. Uh, just few words, I think. Uh, well, how much do, time do I have? I, I lost my watch. Two minutes, three, three minutes. Okay. Then just a few, few things uh, to say, main steps of the proof, I'm oh, sorry, I want to, to say something before. Main step was uh, to, for the final theorem to use the previous three formulas for the gamma limit inequalities inequality straightforward because the integral can be split as the integral over the sum of the integral in each subset and then the limit of the sum is larger than the sum of the limit. Instead, for the uh, for the limbs of inequality, this uses very much the asymptotic formulas to build uh, the recovery sequences. There are several directions for generalization. Some simple generalizations are just to keep G more general, the profile function, or maybe to allow to the loss of connectedness in different directions, not only the directions of the coordinate axis. And another point is uh, to allow F not to be convex. Convexity on F uh, permits to have a very weak convergence. If f is not any more convex, we need stronger convergence and that could be, uh, could be more difficult and could bring to some open problems. So before uh, I want to, to conclude my talk, I want to, 
to say uh, that there are very interesting networks uh, with oscillating boundaries that uh, come into application. And um, to thank you for your attention. I